We still don't know who won the $800 million Mega Millions jackpot, but the ticket was sold in Sugar Land. Y'all have a cousin in Sugar Land. You better call uh -huh. him and say, was it you? <laughs> it was it your money you won? Anyway, uh, while all that money leads to really some big dreams, one third of winners have actually gone broke within just a few years after winning millions of dollars. Yikes. Kazuma reporter Heather Sullivan is here. She's on the case for you to make sure you manage your money wisely. Heather, good morning. Yeah, good morning. We don't want that to happen to the latest $800 million winner, but I want to show you what $800 million actually looks like. First of all, if you take that lump sum, it's $404 million, but if you have a uh, federal marginal tax rate of up to 37%, that leaves you with $254 million. And if you take those 30 annual payments at that same tax rate, it's about $17 million a year. It's a ticket to dream. I'm going to share it with my fiance, my sister, my family, some of them. <laughs> but while the fantasy of winning the lottery is fun, one third of winners go broke, says the Certified Financial Planner Board of Standards. And some lives have been shattered. Jack Whitaker of West Virginia won $314 million. In two years, their granddaughter died struggling with drug addiction. Whitaker faced multiple lawsuits and was arrested twice for drunk driving. Abraham Shakespeare of Florida was murdered. And Amanda Clayton won a million but kept collecting food stamps. She was found dead of an apparent drug overdose. No one wants that to happen to the $800 million winner. So we consulted a financial planner. My first question to you is should you take the lump sum or the payout that keeps paying year after year if you're willing to invest it you can usually do better if you're worried you may uh, blow too much of the money then taking it as that annual payment definitely helps keep make sure make sure that you don't unfortunately blow it all or lose it all <laughs> when all these people start asking you kind of pressuring you hey will you give me some money again and again how do you handle that yeah, I mean, one of the first things you want to do, I mean, frankly, is they sort of have your have your team in, in place, you know, so to speak, meaning it's usually from a, a financial advisor, an attorney, you know, a CPA. And in one sense, you can kind of let those professionals play some defense. You know, in Texas, you can stay anonymous. Is that a good mm -hmm. idea to just maybe try and hide? I, after a while, though, it might be kind of hard to hide the mansion behind you, right? You can set up an LLC or a trust where you're basically that entity is then the official winner. You, of course, control the entity, but oftentimes the attorney will act as a go-between. So the, the mail goes to a P.O. box. You're not all of a sudden getting thousands of pieces in the mail for every offer. Some great tips there. Now, the winner has six months to collect the winnings, which gives them time to get that financial advisor, attorney, and CPA all in place, Delon. So you, you mentioned here, because I know a lot of people may not want their business out mm -hmm. in the streets when it comes to money. You can stay anonymous? You can in Texas. Uh, so we, in fact, may never know who it is unless we suddenly start seeing someone drive that really expensive car. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so if you pull up in that black Range Rover mm -hmm. with the black rims <laughs> and the black tint, <laughs> Melissa. Yeah, then you're going to have an idea. Uh-huh. All right. Uh-huh. You get a text from me. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He's going to want a little loan. A couple dollars. <laughs> All right, Heather, thanks a lot. You bet.